We've been getting a ton of comments that ask, how do I use my car audio subwoofer in my room or at my house? So you have a really nice subwoofer that you're not currently using in your ride, but you need some kick on that home audio system. You have a couple of options to add that sub to your home system. You could take a car audio amp and do a power supply setup, which really isn't practical, or you could make your life easy and just get a home audio amp. The entire point of using a car audio sub is you don't wanna break the bank. It's something you already have and want to use. This was my dilemma for my work desk here at QMV. I had some older equipment that I had lying around, Kef speakers, an old Carver amp, and a home-built subwoofer that I CNC'd with an Image Dynamics IDQ12 sub and a 300-watt bash plate amplifier that decided to randomly die on me. I again went for a bargain solution, knowing that I wouldn't need maximum output, and most of the time I'd be using about 30-50% to 50 of the capability of the sub. I opted to go with a top-rated Amazon special, the Fosi Audio TP02. I had an older version that I was pleasantly surprised with given its performance at medium volume levels. It also works great for butt kickers on a racing sim. So let's give the new version a go and check out its audio performance. Inside the box is a user manual, power cord, 24 volt, 4.5 amp power supply, and monoblock mini amplifier. The back of the amp has your RCA audio inputs, subwoofer audio output, binding posts for audio output, and power input. The front of the unit has your controls, power switch, crossover control, and volume control. I give FOSI credit. The potentiometers seem of great quality. They're super fluid with nice resistance. It would have been nice to have a slightly larger LED, but that's just me. Based on basic math, 24 volts times 4.5 amps is 108 watts, maximum output if the amplifier is 100% efficient, which it's not. Based on this, the maximum stated output of 220 watts is a pipe dream. However, at moderate volume levels, this amplifier is perfect for most uses. There is a snippet in the instruction manual that actually indicates its true audio output. Dimensions of the amplifier are 5 and 3 8 inches deep, 3 and 3 8 inches wide, and 1 and 5 8 inches high. As always, let's test it ourselves. But first, I want to take a look inside the amplifier. There really isn't much to see. A basic power supply, including caps, and a heat sink. We'll remove the heat sink so you can see the actual amplifier. Let's test this amplifier out and see if it hits its specification. We conducted this test a little differently. We relied on our SMD meter to indicate clipping and turn the volume down just under clipping with the crossover at its maximum setting. The first test we ran was single channel driven, two ohm, 40 hertz. FOSI rates this amplifier 220 watts maximum output here. Our audio precision will generate our signal and measure distortion. Our HP 8903B audio analyzer picked up 97 watts RMS, 11% distortion, and 13.8 volts of output. Our AMM1 read 87 watts. Next was single channel driven, four ohms, 40 hertz. Our HP picked up 57 watts RMS, 6% distortion, and 15 volts of output. Our AMM1 read 52 watts. During our test, I noticed that adjusting the crossover down would lower the distortion and optimize the output. So I decided to check that out. I ramped the crossover up and down and saw in some areas of the crossover setting, the amp exhibited some odd behavior. By watching our scope and our distortion level, I was able to optimize our crossover setting and was able to get 101 watts RMS with 4.13% distortion at 2 ohms. This is actually greater than what the manufacturer states for this chip. They rated at 10% distortion. So overall, this amplifier is 95% efficient and did an excellent job. 
Our final test was frequency response. We used our audio precision to run up each frequency. Let's do an audio test with our Image Dynamics subwoofer. Overall, this amplifier is very nice and at a reasonable price. It has an extruded aluminum housing with excellent potentiometers and a clean look. Binding post for speaker outputs and a parallel RCA subwoofer output. Given this is a sub $70 amp, this is excellent value. Be sure to go to qualitymobilevideo.com to get all of your car audio and video gear with us today. Links in the bio. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you hated it, click the dislike button. Join the conversation below and subscribe to our channel if you're new. Thanks for watching.